Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our short webinar series. Uh, I'm Derek Taylor, a sales and business uh, development specialist with Goodwin and Company Property Management. As the leader in the association management space, uh, we'd like to provide as much information uh, to the community as possible. And in our short webinar series, we'll be addressing some frequently asked questions on topics that board members and homeowners might be seeking uh, further explanation on. Uh, today, I have an expert in this field joining me to provide a professional opinion uh, on some of the subjects to be discussed. Um, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Clint Brown. Uh, if you please introduce yourself and speak a little on your background and your role you play in association management. Absolutely, Derek. And hey, thanks for having me today. So hello, Texas. Uh, as Derek mentioned, my name is Clint Brown. I am the equity shareholder and leader for our Property Owners Association Division at Roberts, Markell, Weinberg, Butler, Haler, Haley. Much like Goodwin, we've got offices around the state of Texas, and we really kind of focus in on community association law. So happy to be here today and hopefully provide a little bit of background on some of the big issues that community associations have to deal with. Now, in that respect, I'm an attorney, but the information I'm giving today is for educational purposes only. So please do not treat it as legal advice. If you have further questions, get with your Goodwin representative or just reach out to Goodwin or your counsel, your legal counsel may be able to help as well. With that, Mr. Taylor, I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Glenn, I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for joining me today. Um, so first, first thing that comes across our, our mind a lot is uh, can an owner in a single family community install a perimeter fence around their lot um, including the entire lot in the front yard. So Derek, you know, prior to September 1st of 2021, the answer would be very easy. No. If your restrictions prevent fencing forward of the residential structure, then you could prevent perimeter fencing, period, end of sentence, because that's what the governing documents provide. However, on September 1st of 2021, a new law got passed regarding security measures. And one of those security measures is perimeter fencing. And when you look at what a perimeter fence is, it is literally a fence surrounding, as kind of Derek hinted to, the entire lot. So can an owner install perimeter fencing, i.e. fencing forward of the residential structure surrounding the lot? The answer is yes, but. So here is a little bit of good news for community associations, you can dictate the materials, the type of perimeter fencing that can be used. So metal, wrought iron, wood, all those good things, whether or not you've got to have uh, heavy duty posts every so often, there are things associations can do to regulate the perimeter fence. But if an owner asks for one under the new law, they are entitled to it. Yeah, I appreciate that, Clint. Yeah. And, and with that being said, uh, I understand that this has to do with security and protecting a homeowner's lot. Uh, I know that some governing documents regulate, you know, fencing to be six foot, eight foot, so forth and so on. If something is forward of the structure, uh, can you regulate height uh, restrictions as well? Yeah, so I, I, I think kind of that type of fencing includes height. And Unfortunately, this law is not very specific, so attorneys are having to interpret it to determine what that means, but type of fencing includes height because inherently a security fence has to provide security. So would a one foot fence provide security? No, of course not. So that's where that height aspect comes into play. And just as a sidebar, I mean, Derek, have y'all seen a lot of perimeter fence applications since this new law was put into effect? Um, not a ton, uh, actually very, very few. And the ones that we have seem to be from people who just want to test and see where the boundaries are, um, yet to see anyone actually install one. And so, uh, no, the, I would say the case is very, very rare. That's good. And, and, you know, one final comment on this security measure, this new law, if you haven't already done so, and you're a single family community, please adopt a security measures policy. Get with your Goodwin team member if you're with Goodwin. If you're not, get with your counsel so that you can have a policy in place so that you can dictate the types of materials, the height, all that other good stuff. Because if, if you don't have that, then the ACC, your Architectural Control Committee, 
will have to rely on its own discretion to dictate the type of fencing, which is always hard to do in these types of circumstances. Glenn, I got one last question for you that, that's come up recently. Um, and if, if a homeowner is going to put a security fence around uh, their lot and the entirety of their lot, uh, what happens when a common area sidewalk cuts through their lot? Yep. Yeah. So really good question, Derek. And, and we've run into that a few times. It's our position that that easement right, so it's, it's likely kind of an easement right running through an owner's lot for the sidewalk, we argue that the easement takes precedent. So you cannot infringe on the other owner's property rights and, and easement rights, the, the right to use that sidewalk. So we push back and say, look, the law doesn't go that far. You can't infringe on another property right. So awesome question, Derek. And you, that's, that is typically how our, associate, our, our law firm kind of responds. That's the position we take. Clint, I appreciate your time and your opinions on the matter and um, look forward to talking to you in the future on a couple other webinars. Thank you, sir. Derek, you're very welcome, sir. And hey, everybody enjoy the rest of their day. Bye-bye.